Long practice test. Let's go. Bunch of trig. Find the values of all six trigonometric functions. You see they're listed here for you, but if they're not, um, I would recommend you know sine, cosine, tangent, and that the reciprocal of sine is cosecant, the reciprocal of cosine is secant, the reciprocal of tangent is cotangent. But you would be wise to write so ka toa, of course, have it memorized um, before you even begin. So, the only way we can use so ka toa is if we have a 90 degree angle, which we do. And you can see this is a 3, 4, 5. If you're not sure of your families or you just have a mental block, you can go a squared plus b squared equals c squared. 9 and 16 is 25. Bada boom, bada bang. You don't have to do the right thing. Square root of 25 is 5. So easier to remember your families, but you still got Pythagorean theorem to help you out. So got to understand that that is our reference angle, so that's what we got to focus on. So if that's our reference angle, we know that this is our opposite because it's opposite the reference angle. We know this is the hypotenuse just because it is, leaving us with this as the adjacent side. And once you've figured that all out, the rest should be pretty easy. So what is sine opposite over hypotenuse? Now if the dimensions are like 6, 8, 10, and you get 8 tenths, you should reduce it, just know that. Um, so, if sine is 4 fifths, then cosecant is 5 fourths. Just flip it. What is cosine? Well, it's adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's 3 over 5. And to find secant, we flip it, 5 thirds. Tangent, opposite over adjacent. So that's 4 over 3. Flip it, 3 fourths. Not bad for the first problem, but there is a lot going on. Let's go to number two, a little bit trickier. Let theta be an acute angle. So they're saying pick this one or this one because this is less than 90. That's what the phrase acute angle means. So it's got to be this one or this one. So I'm just going to put it right here. And then it says such that sine is 5, 6. What they're telling you, because sine is opposite over hypotenuse, they're telling you the opposite is 5 hypotenuse is 6. Now I know you were uh, taught families a little bit, 30, 60, 90s a little bit, 45, 45, 90s a little bit, but you got to be on your guard. Don't assume everything is going to be one of those special triangles. So we got our opposite is 5, our hypotenuse is 6. Now is there a 4, 5, 6 family? No. So you are forced to use Pythagorean theorem, so a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Remember, c is always the hypotenuse. This can be a or b. This can be a or b, because this is going to write the ship for you. So, x squared plus 25 equals 36. Subtract 25 from both sides, and I get 11. And then I go bada boom, bada bing. And then I get the square root of 11. Now I've got all my sides. Now let's identify them. This would have to be my opposite. This is my hypotenuse. This is my adjacent. Now we're ready to rock and roll. So cosine, by definition, is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that would be the square root of 11 over 6. Tangent, by definition, is opposite over adjacent. So that would be 5 over the square root of 11. Now, the question is, with this trig, do you have to get the square root out of the denominator? Now, on big tests like ACT, SAT, you may not have to if you check the multiple choices out. Sometimes they don't worry about it, sometimes they do. But let's go ahead and get rid of it. Get the radical out of the basement. Good parenting. And there you have it. And always check to see if this can be reduced, and it can't. So you are officially done with tangent and cosine. So there's that. A little trickier. Now it says, what are this? Now they don't give you a triangle. You have to create your own. So they're giving this to you in terms of radians. And you've, what you've been taught how to convert radians to degrees so that you can use your spinner. 
So we know that pi over 4, if I just focus on pi over 4, pi over 4 is actually 45 degrees. Now I've got it memorized. You should too, but if you don't, you can always put 180 in for pi. 180 divided by 4 will give you 45, but that, that needs to be multiplied by negative 3, which is a negative 135. This is telling you where and how to spin your spinner. So we always start here, make your drawing a little bigger, gives you more space. This tells you spin your spinner down, this tells you how far to spin it. So keep track, be accurate, that's down 90. I have to go another 45, because that adds up to 135, so I'm done. Now, to create your right triangle, remember I said you got to have a 90 degree triangle in order to use trig? Let me make sure this is, there we go, that should be clear. So now we got to draw a right triangle. Well, we have two options, we can go back to the Y. This is your never, no, no, no. This is your always, always back to the X. That's your yes. So we know this is 90, 45. That leaves us with 45 right here. And we know that's 90. So this is a sneaky little way of creating a 45, 45, 90. Now, notice this triangle had dimensions because of this. This triangle already gave you two of the three dimensions. You were able to find the third. This one doesn't give you any dimensions. But if you've been listening closely, these trig functions are ratios and they're all equal regardless of the dimensions of your triangle. So you can pick whatever you want. If that's the case, back to geometry, I know these two are equal. So I'm gonna call that a one, call that a one, but we have to be extremely careful because this is an XY coordinate system so this would actually be left one this would be down one that's the easiest mistake to make it's just to forget those negatives now if we have a 45 45 90 rule we know x x x squared of 2 we've been taught that our hypotenuse is never negative so we can ignore the negatives on this move so if this is one for example if I said this is one and this is one this would have to be 1 square root of 2. So that's what this is. This is just the square root of 2. Now we can find stuff. So what is sine? Well, remember, this is my reference angle because it's sandwiched between the x-axis and my spinner. So we focus on this. That would make this my opposite side. This is my hypotenuse, leaving the adjacent side as that negative 1 right there. Now we can really find stuff. So what is sine? Opposite over hypotenuse. So that'd be negative one over the square root of two. And if we clear that out, we get negative square root of two over two. That's sine. What is cosine? Well, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And if you look at it, that would be this over this, which is the same. So cosine is the same as sine. There you go. Uh, number four, consider a right triangle, measure of angle A, so keep track of that. I'm going to draw it like this. I really don't know what the dimensions are. I do see that this is a 60, so they're giving us a 30, 60, 90. But if this is my A and C is 60, I'm going to put it down here because that looks more 60-ish. And there's 180 degrees in a triangle, leaving us with 30. We're going to call that our B because that's the only angle we got left. Now they're going to give us some specifics. Side AB is 6 square root of 3. And then it says find AC. That means this. And find BC. That means this. Now notice, this is just a fancy way of giving you a 30, 60, 90. And if you know what this is, and you remember your rules for 30, 60, 90s, which we've been working on a lot. This is my x. This is my 2x. That's my x square root of 3. So I'd multiply it by a square root of 3 to get there. So how would I get back? By dividing by the square root of 3. So I take this. I divide by the square root of 3. Look how easy this is because these cancel. And I'd get 6. Now if that's 6, this has to be 12 based on the 30, 60, 90 rules. So AC is 6, BC is 12. 
That's it for number four. All right, number five. An angle has a reference angle of 65 degrees and its terminal side, that means where it ends, ends in quadrant three. So let's draw ourselves a little picture. We know this is quadrant one, two, three, and four. So they're telling you, draw a reference angle of 65 degrees in the third quadrant. And that means this angle right here would have to be 65 degrees. And that's where my spinner stops. What are the possible positive measures and negative measure for that angle? In other words, if we were to draw our spinner right there, and we're going to spin it in the positive direction, we'd have to calculate what that spin is. Well, that's just 180, because that's half a circle, or just 90 plus 90, plus 65. So this plus this is 245. That's the positive one. Now the negative one, we would start here, because we always start there, and it would Basically, they're asking you, how far would you have to spin your spinner that way, down? Well, that's 90, and if this is 65, the remnant, or what's left, is 25. So I'd have to add 90, because I'm going this way, plus 25, which is 115, and I'd throw a negative in front of that, just to make sure. So there you go. Uh, number six. Which of the following are measures of the angle shown? Assume the reference angle is 30. So if we actually drew this in like this, I would, they're trying to tell us that that's 30. So we really have to investigate. It says which of the following? We don't select all that applies. So it could be one, could be all four. We don't know. So we're going to check into each one of them. Let's check this one. Negative 510. So we start there. We go around 360, and that means we have to go a net. We have to continue going another 150 for that to add up to 510. And so we'd go 90 and then 60, which is like, yep, there'd be 30 degrees left. So that's definitely one of them. That's a yes. 150. Well, we start here. We'd go 90 plus 60. That would stop right here. That's a no negative 210. We start here, we go 90, and a 90, and another 30. That stops right here. We're, we're looking for where, which one of these stops right here, so that's another no. 210, start here, we go 180, plus 30. Yep, that adds up to 210. Winner, winner, chicken dinner, A and D. All right, so Next one, Zhang walks in a straight line from the trailhead at zero, zero, meaning starts right there. He travels at an average rate of three miles per hour in the direction 30 degrees west of north. So that means you start north and, well, he starts here. West of north is here. That's just basically telling you that that's what this drawing's representing. So they've already given you the drawing, but if they don't, you'd have to know this is north. West of north would be that way, 30 degrees. So they're giving you the drawing, but maybe they won't. Now watch this. It says, what are the coordinates of Zhang's location relative to the trailhead after four hours? So it's three miles per hour. Um, so what they're telling us is this is after one hour he has walked three miles so we're going to use that coordinate now earlier I said that when they don't give you dimensions where do they say that you can apply anything you want but now this problem gives you some more specifics it says he's traveling at an average rate of three miles per hour. So he's walking, walking, walking. So we're going to label this as three. But that represents one hour. Keep that in mind. So it says, what are the coordinates of Zhang's location relative to the trailhead after four hours? So there's a couple ways of doing it. You could extend this 
four times, but that's going to get off the grid. We could use a little common sense. Three miles per hour for four hours means he has walked 12 miles. So that's kind of the way they're going to give you that spinner length, which is our hypotenuse. And again, to create a right triangle, we always go back to the X, never to the Y. And now it's just a fancy little 30, 60, 90. Now this is 30, meaning this is 60, this is 30. And so we know this is our hypotenuse, so we go right to our short side, and that would be half, so that'd be six, and this would be six squared of three. So the coordinate point, that's what they're asking, would be negative six, six squared of three. All right, so there's number seven. Let me pause this. Actually, that's it for this video. Uh, come back for part two.